Hello everybody and welcome back to Ballymoon Castle. I've just sold the case tractor in preparation for buying the Fiat Agri tractor. Now this tractor is in the mod contest and it is highly requested. So I'm going to be using it and you can see here, we're in the store page, there are plenty of modifications you can get for it. Obviously each modification does cost money for an already very expensive tractor. It is expensive for its age. So what do we want for our tractor? Extra work lights. Yes, I think we'll go with that. It should look pretty good. Uh, we'll set up Treborg, tire set, Michelin, Pirelli. So these are all um, very fancy, but they are adding a bit of an unnecessary expense. Maybe we should go with the Michelin just to try it out. Uh, no beacon, high filter, aerial and weight. No beacon light. Hmm. Well, I don't know what the high filter is, but we'll buy it. Um, with one beacon light, with two beacon lights, <laughs> or with fenders. Wow, there are so many different things you can get for this. It is pushing the price up quite a, a bit though. I think we'll go with the two beacon lights because we're going to be doing some work on the road, so it would be very useful. And here it is. The first thing I notice is the rattling exhaust. I don't think there's anything wrong with this, it's supposed to. Because obviously when these tractors run, especially the older ones, they do have a bit of a rattle to them. So the fact that's animated just makes it look so much more alive. Oh, sorry, my steering wheel. It does make a grinding sound if you turn it too tight. Uh, right, okay, so the next thing is IC. We've got interactive control. So this one here, I think, actually removes the side panel if I press it correctly. Um, sorry, there we go. And uh, this one here should lean it up because we don't want to keep hold of it. You can see it's now leaning up here. And it is quite tricky to see from out here, so I will try and zoom in. There we go. But the engine is rattling in there, clearly animating that it is running, which you don't really see in farming simulator tractors. The belts are all turning, all animated. Fan looks brilliant, alternator's turning. So tons and tons of detail here. And there is the exhaust. I'll be honest, I haven't really explored all of the interactive controls, so it's going to be fairly new to me as well. This side, I would guess, does the same thing. Yes, just on the different side. See the injector lines are mainly on this side. We'll put that back on again though. I must do it in the correct order. And then we've got the door. We have a door on both sides. It is a standard feature. And then we've got a window here which will open for a bit of fresh air, we might as well keep it open. We've got a window on the back, and a window here. In fact, we'll keep both windows open. Anything up the top? There is. There is something. I am not entirely sure what it does. It's the top window. How did I not even notice that? It's right above me. There it is. So we have plenty of fresh air, like a sunroof. We also have cab suspension, and you can see you can disable it if you want to, but I think we will do. Oh yeah, so you can see the driver stays completely rigid when it's switched off, when it's switched on. It's basically seat suspension, I think. I think the reason why you want to turn it off is because when you're driving from in cab view, it can make you feel a little bit seasick if you're that kind of person, but for me, I think it just adds a lot of realism. Um, so next, I think where, where it says add disc, I think that's to do with the weights on the front. It is. So it currently weighs 600 kilograms. It's a ton, 1.4, 1.8. So you can really load that up. Take disc away by pressing X. But I think we need about a ton on the front because we're going to be having a mower on here. We may have to add a bit more later on. We will see. Um, I'll probably close the sunroof too. But let's buy this mower. I am intrigued to find out if it's any good. We've got to do a lot of work for the council today. We've got to be cutting the verges. Uh, so, yes. Let's just find the mowing section. Mowers. I don't really have much in the way of mowers, but it's this one here. Multigrind 200. And it is 11,000 euros. Got a working width of 2 metres. So perfectly wide enough for doing verges. 
we will probably use it for other stuff too. Uh, right, there's me thinking it's facing the other way, but actually it isn't. I'm going to square up. There we go. Nice and square with the mower. Attach it to the back. Should have a PTO. Yep, an extremely long PTO. And we can now head off and begin our verge mowing session. Yes, I will close the sunroof. Cab roof. We'll keep the windows open. So the verges are actually everywhere, obviously, but I mean, what I mean to say is they can be cut nearly everywhere. Most of the verges do have cuttable grass, whereas on some maps, they don't. It's either the type of grass which you can't cut, that is such a thing, or it's, I don't know, something like gravel, and you can't even cut gravel. So this is a perfect map for us to demonstrate this machine on. Let me just try and cut it from this car. So I think the best place to start is actually this road here. I reckon if we go on the opposite side of the road, there'll be more stuff to do, more grass to cut. We also need to do the road which heads up to our yard. I have mastered it, so the way you do this is you left click and then you can sort of push up and down to slide it from side to side and left to right to do the angle. So we need to keep it fairly level for this job. So I think if we have it about here, obviously we can adjust it later on. My main concern is going too far into the bushes because there is a collision and it will stop the tractor dead. So although we need to cut this grass, we don't want to pulverize everything and damage the machine. Auto save. So it is actually cutting. As you can see, it's neatening things up. Not everything is cuttable. There will be some weeds in here which won't cut. But the actual grass is cutting very well. Brilliant. That is done. There isn't really a great deal on this side of the road, so I'll just try and do as much as I can do without clipping the hedges. It would be nice if you could actually cut the hedges, but that is yet to be put into Farming Simulator, even as a mod. It must be very hard to do. So from your end, it probably looks like I'm barely cutting anything here. Mind the sign. Just, yeah, I'm cautious of getting it stuck. We do not want to get another stuck on the hedge. Fair chunk here. It's neatening things up at least. And yes, when we get to the roundabout, we will go round it and then come back up the side. I think that pretty much does it for this side of the road. We don't want to flail their bin bags. It would be a total mess. They would be everywhere, all the litter. And it would probably be very smelly too. Signposts are an issue. We need to get as close as possible, but obviously you don't want to actually hit them. So you've got to be very vigilant doing this job. And there we go. A few nettles here too. Going the wrong way around a roundabout. It feels scary. Not advised. also on the complete wrong side of the road. But you can't really do it another way. It wouldn't work. Okay, car. You didn't have to get so angry. I'll move out of the way for you. Oh, they are an angry bunch. Oh, dear. How many cars are there? Aren't we good? We probably should have the hazard lights on too. Not to warn of our hazard. To warn of the angry motorists. Yeah, quite a bit here. 
also a sign. I'm not quite sure why it's jumping. Probably a bump in the road. And the sign here. And another car. And a good place to pull over. Go on in cars. I'll just finish off here and then we'll head back to the yard in the yard direction I think that's as far as we need to go yeah it's a surprisingly busy road this most of the cars go this way so I will be very pleased when we're actually off this part of the road and we go up to the bit where there is no traffic it'll make life much easier Unfortunately though, this is where most of the grass is. Here we go again. More cars. Maybe it's easier just to turn off traffic. I bet in real life that is something you could wish you could do. If you are doing this job. Hedge cutting as well. In real life. On the roadside. Must get painful. But one thing's for sure, we are making an easy job. So it's all cut nicely. Okay, so it begins the part which is not going to be quite as stressful. It doesn't stop the post from being in the way though. We are still there. He's making a nice neat job though. If we had to do every road on the map, oh I went through that post, it would uh, take forever and as you know the grass does grow back fairly quickly, can be adjusted, but it would feel like your work wasn't really worth it. Sort of be a nice change dins today because we haven't really done it before. I did a little bit of verge mowing on the Taste of Donegal back in FS15, but I don't think I've done it since then. And the main reason for it is because there hasn't been a decent verge mower, so this makes a nice change. Anyway, if you do want to vote for this mod, either of these two mods, you can do. I'll put the link below. And then, yeah, just cast your vote. Anything from one star to five stars. And you don't have to vote to download. Anyway, we're virtually done. Once we've gone past this sign, we'll be back at the starting point. Let me just try it from in cab view, see how easy it is. Hmm. Yes, it is fairly tricky. Let's fold it up. And we'll see if there is anywhere else to do. This is the other road I was considering. But looking at it again, it's so narrow, there's not really much grass to cut. So maybe it isn't worth it. But I will find another job for the Fiat Agri. Or just the Fiat, I should probably call it. Um, we do have to fertilise the grass field. Now I don't know how progressed it is. It may still be just soil. If it is just soil, what I'll try and do is get it to just grow a bit. And then we can spread some fertiliser. You may be able to spread some fertiliser anyway because it wasn't done initially. Yes, I think you will be able to. So yeah, either way, spraying or fertilising is going to have to be done very soon. With a matter of urgency, really, in the grass field, because the grass field is going to be cut as soon as it's ready. 
we're going to be doing. I think it's going to be some hay bales and also some silage bales. I haven't fully decided, but there is another mod I'd like to try out. And it does involve bales, so we do have to have some grass available. There's the pit. Let's just see how progressed that is. 17%, yes. Not very far at all. Not to worry, we've got no rush. It's because we're playing in real time. That's the whole reason why nothing's really growing. And what about the grass bed? Oh, it's gone green. Which means it is ready for fertilizer. And I do think the fertilizer spreading is going to be better than spraying. Now, because it's gone green, it means the underlying texture has also gone green. It's no longer just soil. Which has totally changed the landscape. So what we need to do is get the spreader attached to this tractor. We need to take the flare mower off. And then we need to just basically go and spread this field. So many gold nuggets about. There's another one there, hovering. But at the moment, I don't think we really need to have gold nuggets. If we do become desperate for money, I may go on a gold nugget hunt. But otherwise, I can't really see the need at the moment. Alright, so let me just open the door. Um, so yeah, Seasons. Seasons mod. As I've explained before, I'm going to be doing it. I'm not going to be doing it on this map though. The reason for it is because you have to, well ideally, you have to start a fresh save. Otherwise there could be issues. So instead of st uh, starting all this again, I think the best thing to do is just to do it on a different map. Is that level? No. Obviously not. It should have been. It's quite hard to sit level. But I think that's good enough. Yeah, take the PTO off and detach it. It isn't the biggest of mowers, but it is perfect for what we need it for. So let's have a bit of a tour of the dashboard. Yes, you can actually have a tour of these things. Seriously though, what I mean is we've got different LEDs which light up. I don't know if they're supposed to be LEDs, they look like it, but either way, the lights and also we've got the speedometer and hour meter just here. All of which work. So you can see we've got the, the sort of warning icon up and also a circle with a line through it. As far as I'm aware, the circle with a line is telling you that you're stationary and the other one is telling you the handbrake is on. So if I start to move, you can see that one lights up, which is the forward or reverse light. Reverse is red and forwards is green. So quite an intelligent system. We also have I think it's the engine temperature, yeah, the engine temperature is just here, and it does warm up a bit as you accelerate. We then have the diesel, and also the RPM, which works just perfectly, like real life. The hour meter also works, you can see it's even showing just less than half an hour's work. This tractor must have been put straight into storage out the factory. The newest Fiat there is. Actually, it's the same age, it just he's never done any work. So, it's about to be put to some work with the fertilizer spreader. I don't think we've got one, but I will check first of all. It would be highly embarrassing to go and buy one if we already have one, but we don't. So, it looks like the Kuhn one is going to be the best. I think it's going to be fine for this tractor. We have the front weights, so there should be no issues there. But we are going to have to buy the fertilizer, which could be a little bit expensive. Fertilizer is not cheap. Right, so let's race over to the store. I say race, 26 miles per hour. I suppose it is racing in tractor terms. Although 26 even for a tractor is still very slow. I was following a, uh, a telehandler and its maximum speed was 13 miles per hour. That is slow. It was only a micro telehandler. I think I made the right decision in having dual beacons. It filled through space a bit more. It makes it look more interesting and it's easier to see, especially when you're doing the road work. Let's go right here, over to our favourite place, the store. We really shouldn't spend too much time here, but we do. I'm always buying more equipment. The good thing is though, because we've got more money now, we don't really have to worry about it as much. 
going to death. It's unlikely it's going to happen. So the spreader should be waiting for us here. There it is. It is a big spreader and you would usually put it on a much bigger tractor. But really, the only reason why I'm putting it on here, or two reasons, is because I want to try it out more. I want to use this tractor more than anything else at the moment. And also, because we do have the functionality of having the extra weight, which is also very useful. And I think that is going to be enough. And it doesn't look unrealistically big, or a bad setup. It looks perfectly fine. So we only one more thing to do. Take it back to the yard. I can see why so many people wanted me to buy this Fiat. It fits in very well. It's like the map and the tractor should be together. I think, well, as far as I'm aware from reading all my comments, Fiat's are just incredibly popular in this area. Now, a lot of people wanted me to get rid of the Master Ferguson tractor, the um, 5610, is it? You know which one I mean anyway, the drop nose. But then I thought, well, that's quite a high horsepower tractor in terms of what we've already got, so we probably should keep it. But then I thought, well, the case is similar, it's a similar horsepower, but then it's older. Now, older isn't always worse, it's just we were already buying an old tractor, this one here, and I think having two old tractors and selling a newer one would seem like a pretty odd thing to do. So where's the fertiliser? Uh, just here, straight to the place. up. I thought it would come out of the uh, pipe. But not today. It's decided not to. Uh, right, a ton. Yep, a ton is still good. In fact, we want to have a smaller amount of weight as possible. The least amount of weight that we can possibly have and still not do a wheelie. Because otherwise the compaction is going to be much higher. I know when these things are full, they are very heavy. And you do have to have front weights, and even with them, you can still do a wheelie. Well, I say a wheelie, but you know, when the front wheels just come off the ground a bit. But this tractor seems solid. It doesn't want to go anywhere. If we adjust the weight then, would that make a difference? If I go back onto here and press X. Maybe the tractor is just really heavy in the first place. It doesn't seem to make a difference. It says the weight is already 200 kilograms, so we already do have some front end weight from something. But here we are, at our very own grass field. GPS we can't really use because it's not fitted to the tractor, so I'm just going to have to use my own eyes and brain. First of all, we have to make sure the PTO is attached, which it is. Makes a change. I usually start doing stuff without even touching the PTO. We've got a really good spread width on here. So I'm going to continue. I'll do a time lapse for you. I can't guarantee that this is going to look neat at the end of it, but as long as it's actually fertilised, that's the most important thing.
now just for the finishing touches, I think there is a piece down here. Brilliant. So this has turned out to be the best fertiliser spreader for us. A very good working width. Like these, these fields here, when you first see this map you think, okay, so it's a map with lots of fields, most of them being fairly small. But actually, if you look at it again, it's a map with lots of fields, most of them being fairly big. There are a few small ones, but you've got to be careful with the machinery you buy. You really do need to have some big equipment. Not huge stuff, no challenges or anything, but nothing super small. There are some really uh, decently sized fields here. Like field 14, that took me forever to do. I think it might be the biggest field, but yeah, still, it took me a very long time to do. Field 13 is big too. Um, but no, I think you're looking for a maximum horsepower in your biggest tractor at around 250, I thought. 250 horsepower. And then you need some 90, 100 horsepower ones. 150. That's what we've got anyway. Pretty much. I'm not exactly sure what the New Holland is. Um, maybe we don't have anything quite as big as 250. But it wouldn't be a bad thing if you did have one at that horsepower. Um, 175. So what's the fit? 140. 88. 72. And then we've got the Massey Ferguson at the beginning. 130. Yeah, so I think yeah, you could you could get away with 250 horsepower. That might be a bit of a push. What I'm trying to say is don't underestimate the size of this map. It is pretty big and there are some huge fields. So this looks like a good place to store the fertilizer spreader. It's a shame there isn't a pallet or something to put it on. Make it a bit easier to pick it up again. Not to worry. It's fine. So, what should we do now? Let me just check on things. I know the animals do need a lot of work. Desperately. I'm not going to keep putting it off. We will be doing it as soon as we can do. The straw can be done today, in fact. I will do the straw. So that does mean getting a spike for the wheel loader. Uh, we probably could put it in the bucket, but it's not really worth it. You don't really pick up bales with a bucket. So, it's going to mean another job of driving to the store. It's always fun to drive to the store. How many times have we been today? Twice? Three times? Many times. Right, just gonna dump that in there. Let's find the wheel loader. It's in its own little shed, along with the crawling Massey Ferguson. So yeah, I've had a, bit, a few people say, yeah, you, you should get rid of it. This one here, the 294 because you wouldn't ever see it in Ireland, but honestly, I'm not really too worried about that. I think it's nice to use different equipment anyway, even if it isn't in keeping with the area. And who knows, you might see one, you don't know really. Out of all the different farms in Ireland, you can't guarantee that nobody has got one. So maybe we are the first, but still, we're gonna keep it. I like that tractor, it's a fun thing. One person actually commented, and said, in the video when you were cultivating and seeding, they said, I thought it was a ride on mower in the background because it's so small. It is pretty small. Talking of ride on mowers, it would be interesting to have some in Farming Simulator. There is a Craftsman. I've never used it. I didn't think the textures looked that good, but maybe it is quite good, who knows. Maybe I should download it and give it a go. I think the thing is with Farming Simulator, the smaller the mod, in some ways, the harder it is to do, because the detail is much finer. So, that's probably why these mowers that are implemented don't tend to be that detailed. Our favourite roundabout again. You watch it, car. Oh, you fool. These drivers, they really have no idea. Right, so here we are. As you can see, I've just bought this grab here. I thought it would actually be a good idea because you can put more bales on it and as we're using a wheel loader we don't have to worry about any kind of rear weight as it's already very heavy at the back, we've got the engine mounted back there which acts as a very good weight so yes I think this is going to be a, a good little setup for us. This does mean though we don't have to get any tractors with front loaders but that's going to save us some money. Just realised it 
probably is best if we have the beacon on. As we do have some spikes on the front. They tilted up as much as I can get them. I mean, I could put it right up in the air and then tilt it down. It's just... Some people don't like it when I do that. And also, it can look a bit top-heavy. The game always seems to do a little bit of a pause when I get to this area. Maybe it's just like loading the environment or something. So it is just the pigs and the cows which require the straw. We don't have to worry about the sheep today. So I think one step at a time, if we can get this sorted then we can spend another episode doing the feed. I do like to sort of spin it out, I don't tend to do everything for the animals in a day. You've noticed already. And it's not that I don't like to do the animals, it's because I like to do other stuff in the same episode. Like today we've done the verge mowing, we've also done the fertiliser spreading, and now we can do a bit with the animals. Seems to be a good way of doing it. If we do a bit with the animals at the end of every episode, um, it's going to make it a bit more interesting. Because those who like arable as well, you're not going to want me to do just livestock for the whole thing. I think here we will take four. It would make sense considering it's a four bale grab. And then of course we can take more in one go as well. It would be a bit of a time waste if we have to keep coming back for one. And don't expect these to be stacked neatly because they won't be. They're only going to be shredded though. We're going to be shredding them in a minute or two, hopefully. Um, providing it works, it should do. Some maps don't always allow you to, but the good ones tend to. So this will be a good um, deciding factor. Although you cannot base it on whether or not the map shreds pails. It's just one thing which I find quite annoying if you can't do that, because in real life, you don't have to have a bale shredder. I mean, you can just get a knife, cut the wrap, and then spread it out with the forks or even by hand. So it is nice to be able to do it without a, a shredder, because they're very expensive. Anyway, I think the cows are just around the corner here. Are they up there or are they around here? We'll find them. Where does it say straw? There. A good thing too, because the uh, top ones are wanting to fall off. Now, is it inside or is it just on the ground? Just on the ground. So just like all the other maps, they tend to take two. At least they're not being greedy. The other two can go across the road to the pig farm. Oh yes, and it did accept the bales. If you didn't notice. But that is a good thing. It saves a lot of hassle and a lot of money. Because those bale shredders are not cheap. The unloading point for the pigs, I would have thought it would be a very similar arrangement. It should say somewhere. Is that the straw? Um. Hmm. I thought it was, but maybe not. It's possibly inside. Ah, there we go. And all the straw has now appeared. So if we look at their information page, you can see the straw for the pigs is maximum. The straw for the cows is maximum. So that is another thing done, which actually leaves not much to do. The pigs, just a bit of grain, and they're sorted. The cows, they just require some grass, which we're growing now. The silage, which we're waiting on. Um, or hay, actually. We can just give them hay. Um, but again... We're waiting for the grass and the power food we can't do yet because we don't have all the ingredients so the cows are going to have to just wait for a moment but the pigs can be sorted in the next episode the sheep which are most important because we've got the most of them they require grass or hay so equally we've got to wait for the grass field to grow now i did get a few people saying you don't need to wait for the grass field to grow because there's loads of grass all over the map looks like you're right there is but as I've grown it specially, and it's a nice flat field, I think we're just going to wait for it to be ready and then we can sort of do it properly and we can do it full on. We can put the bales straight into the yard, store them nicely, and 
they'll be local to the farm as well. Thank you for your suggestions, but that's just the approach I'm gonna to do today or in this series. I don't know what's up here. It looks like lots of grass, but is it really? It could be very bumpy. Let me just run through. Oh, you're right, it is. It's a very nice piece of grass. Another argument though, is it's not ours and it's actually in the grounds of the castle. So <laughs> we can't really go and steal from the castle. That wouldn't be very fair, but there is lots of grass down here. I, I see your point, it's a very valid point, very nice. Um, but yes, I'm just gonna do field 22. Unless we become desperate, then we can do this field here. Anyway, that concludes today's video. Thank you for watching, and until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.